Welcome everyone to the first episode of the Ubuntu show by Lucky Leaders Africa. I am one of your hosts. My name is Risto Wanjanchake. So I would like to give you a short snippet of the reason why we are actually doing this show. This show was born out of a relationship. And this relationship was between the co-founder and the CEO of Lapid Leaders Africa, Miss Esther Moniki, and a group from the United States um, that was part of a conference that she was doing in New York University as part of her master's. So these people got to hear about Lapid and the work that Lapid has been doing. And they felt that they would like to record Lapid's work as part of their documentary, which is called The Ubuntu Documentary. The reason why they are doing that documentary is to perhaps yeah. sensitize people in the United States about the concept of how interconnected we are generationally, how interconnected we are as human beings on a daily, on a daily basis. And therefore, they felt that LAPID would be a great fit as, a, as an organization to teach people in the United States how to live per the Ubuntu conversation and per the Ubuntu philosophy. However, now us on our end, after we were part of the documentary, we felt that it's actually important that we take this Ubuntu conversation ahead by making it customized for us, for ourselves, so that we want to ask what is Ubuntu, why is it necessary? And for us at Lapid, one of the things that have become very key of late is we are aware of the problems that are going on in our country. We have very high costs of living, we have very you know, like disturbing situations in terms of drought, the shortage of food, the shortage of water. There are people who are unfortunately dying because of, you know, all the problems that we are facing, be it um, the climate change, the drought situations, or the economic issues. And we just felt that it's very ironic that people from the United States and therefore people from other nations are coming to learn about Ubuntu from us in Africa. And yet it seems it's like we have been moving further and further away from people who are led and guided by the philosophy of Ubuntu in our decision making. So our hope today by the end of this show is that we are going to have challenged you to start thinking, am I living as a person who is Ubuntu conscious? Are my decisions guided by being as being someone who's aware of the fact that I'm not just an individual, I am part of a community. And furthermore, how can I do to support people who could be going through problems in our country right now and even on a daily basis, how can you practice Ubuntu? And that said, I would like to introduce or rather call upon my co-host, Leslie, to take over for now. Karibu, Leslie. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thanks a lot, Shifa. So thank you so much for the clear brief. I now have a better understanding of what Ubuntu is, what it means to us, and where the Ubuntu sh show came from. So one, I'd like to acknowledge everybody that accepted our invite, the guys online, Lapidas, the Lapid tribe, and everybody who's been able to join us. Thank you, thank you for joining us today. So I'd like to invite our guests who's going to share her story and what Ubuntu is and what it means to her. To her. So Yvonne, the amazing Yvonne, you're very welcome. If you could start by sharing what, who you are and what you do on a daily basis. Um, Yvonne, to hear okay. That. okay, thank you, Leslie and Rispa. So my name is Yvonne Gare. People call me Yvonne. Um, I run a company called Tujenge Social Kenya. And it's basically a social media marketing agency. Uh, we focus on market research and my greatest clients are small businesses under three years old. Um, fun fact, this was actually born out of my urban planning background and my service at Lapid Leaders as co-president of Connect and Recruit. So yeah, that's what I do. 
Brilliant. Maybe Yvonne, I would like to ask, now that you have mentioned that you are part of LAPID, uh, for someone who may not be aware, what is it that you do on a daily basis? So that people who might be curious, they want to be social media managers, they could get ideas of how to start their own careers in that field. Well, actually, it's a fun field. Um, so basically, what I do day to day, I just create content marketing strategies for my clients. I have a number of clients um, that you know, we have contracts for a specified period of time with. And then depending on their contract, we do various things such as community building, um, content creation, curation. And like I said, again, one of my core focuses is on market research. That's, that's what I really offer for these small businesses. Yeah. Right. I think I should, also me I should mention that. Um, mm. One of the things that I'm very passionate about is mental health, yeah? Mm -hmm. And business, Africa, gender, and the environment, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think that is very well known to you. I think our, my co-host, Leslie, has a question for you around Ubuntu. Yeah, okay. Um. Yvonne, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I hear from what you're saying, you're passionate about gender, about Africa, about our people. I feel like by that definition, you already describe what Ubuntu means to you. But I'd like to know, or we'd like, we'd love to hear from you. What is Ubuntu to you? Where did you first hear Ubuntu from? And how do you, how, how do you demonstrate Ubuntu on a day-to-day? -day? Um, okay, Leslie. That's an interesting question for sure. Um, for me, I'd say Ubuntu is a dialogue on the different dimensions of human dignity. Um, I say dialogue to reflect that Ubuntu is majorly a philosophy, a way of life, more than it is like a protocol or written set of you know, rules. Um, Ubuntu to me is also healing. And I think this is reflected in the work of Archbishop Desmond Tutu, which was where I first interacted with Ubuntu, um, there is no future without forgiveness. On a day to day in my business, well, one, when I started out on my business, that was in 2018, 2019, what I was doing was market research and I was serving larger companies such as Ken Africa. But then you see these companies already have the resources, the access to whatever business leverage that they need. And so, when COVID hit, um, there was this big shift of people wanting to start their businesses online, wondering where can I get an extra income? And that's where I came in to help these underserved businesses. Like I said, I served small businesses under three years who majorly need these services and they don't have financial access to you know, social media management, digital marketing strategies. And to me, that's the spirit of Ubuntu. It's the spirit of thinking in as much as it's a business for me, I am doing it because I need for these um, people to find their own prosperity, to preserve their own dignity, which well, business, is, business does that for them. I hope I've answered your question, Leslie. You have answered my question, thank you. Um, really? I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. Okay, this way, go ahead, please. I know you can ask your question first, Leslie, no problem. I was just curious to find out. Uh, I'm hearing uh, that you are passionate about people who are not as privileged, people who are not able to access mm. finances, be it financial, financial services or finances in terms of capital to do whatever they are doing in life. So I tried to find out, do you have an audience or is there specific people that you'd like to reach out with their Ubuntu, Ubuntu, Ubuntu philosophy? Is there, is there somebody that you would be speaking to? Um, wow, Leslie. Okay, yeah, actually, um, I will say that, first of all, I'd like to target individuals. Yeah, I want, because as I said, Ubuntu is a way of life. Ubuntu basically says, as I am, so, you know, so are you. And it's for us, calling us to think 
outside of ourselves, outside of ourselves, thinking about the other person. I would also like to appeal to leaders and government because I think we all bear witness to that. Um, sometimes the policies that are set and the approach to these policies is not reflective of unity, national unity of the underprivileged people in society or the vulnerable populations. Yeah, so everyone, I guess. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Wow. Um, I, I really love that. And I would actually like to do two follow-up questions from the answers that you have given. The mm -hmm. first one I would like to ask is, given your work on social media, meaning that you're on social media a lot of the time of the day, yeah. what challenges or problems would you say you have observed that tell you that Perhaps we are moving further and further and further away from living as people who are Ubuntu led. Okay, Rispa. Um, wow, you're really asking hard questions here, yeah? Um, yeah. So, looking at my man, you know, my deep dive in social media, <laughs> there's some interesting things that I've seen. And I will. I will try to say that it's both driving people to and away from Ubuntu, but first let me deal with dealing people further, further and further from Ubuntu. I think one is a hyper focus on individualism. And I think this is a great, the greatest reason is the Western capitalism influence and sometimes Eastern religions. I don't think that spirit of Africa really comes out as strongly unless you you know, your algorithm is strong on the racism, black, you know, lives matter side of the internet. Um, I also think there's a big mental health disconnect. Yeah, I think that greatly contributes to the conversation of Ubuntu. And, you know, people are trying to grasp how do I heal? And that's causing a lot of disintegration of society as we know it. You know, maybe before for us as Africans, you weren't to question your parents. But I mean, spend a few days on the internet and you know your parents are not good, right? <laughs> we have like um, how the workplace is disintegrating. And when you're on social media, you get to see, you get introduced to all these new thinking patterns. Um, there's a lot that is said about social media being dangerous for the mind because of, you know, the dopamine hits and the addiction it creates. But I like to steer people to the fact that it also triggers a serotonin release. Um, serotonin is basically a chemical that helps, you know, in the bonding process. And I'm like, that happens when, like, yeah, we are all like-minded individuals, yeah? And I'll definitely feel closer to this community after all of this. And that's exactly what happens in social media. You come across communities that, you know, you never thought there's someone else in the world thinking like you are. And so when you look at all, this, what I see is that more than ever, there's a gap for Ubuntu. There's a gap to define Ubuntu, to introduce people to consciously practice Ubuntu. Yeah. Um, I feel like you've actually partly answered my second follow-up question, of which my second follow-up question was, with your understanding of what Ubuntu is, and with the fact that I also know you and I know how close this conversation is to your heart, why do you think it is important for someone who is viewing right now, like for someone who's watching or for someone who's going to be watching this later in the recording, why is it important that now we should be talking about Ubuntu? Wow. Ah. So why is it important that now we should talk about Ubuntu? Okay. There's been a lot of conversations around self-care, wealth, um, trauma, you know. Politically also, there are a lot of conversations that like, like we mentioned, you know, that relate to climate change and other bigger issues. And what I see, why I would say that it's time to practice Ubuntu consciously is one, I say that Ubuntu is healing, right? It's about healing. 
And even as we are healing, the essence of healing is so that you're able to rejoin society. It's not so that you, you know, withdraw and feel like you don't have to deal with people again. You're supposed to heal so that you're able to deal with people again. And I feel like when we introduce these mental health conversations and self-care and individualistic views, they tend to increase that fracture that we see in society. Um, I think also forcing us to question our conditioning and our socialization. I think Ubuntu does that a lot. You know, Ubuntu makes you recognize privilege and it makes you question privilege. And it also makes you come from a position of empathy where you are understanding that sometimes people with privilege will not give it up easily and it has to be taken by force. Um, but that's a conversation for another time, right? <laughs> yes. Um, wow, okay. Danny, when in deep, I think Leslie has a question for you around your most recent work. Okay. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but before we go there, I'd like to again acknowledge the people online. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, kindly drop them on the, on the LinkedIn page. And back to you, Vaughn. You say why you had to be our first guest. Yeah. <laughs> really, really appreciate your presence and sharing your insights and knowledge. And also the spirit of Ubuntu. This is what we are here to preach. And thank you. Thank you for being our, our advocate in that. So I'd like to know, uh, you've mentioned that you've worked in Takana and with underprivileged people. So yeah. how are you engaged? Or what is your most recent engagement and how are you demonstrating Ubuntu in the same? You can briefly explain that to us. Okay. Um, I think with regard to that question, um, what I will want to, let me give a brief story. Yeah? So in my latest project, Adventure in Turkana, um, actually, it's a lifetime experience. I think that if anyone can do it, just go and see what there is to see. But what I came face to face with is a level of suffering that perhaps I had not conceptualized, you know, like basic needs. Um, you know how sometimes when you're thirsty, but you know you're going to get to the house and drink water, yeah? So I found these people will stay even two, three days without knowing where they'll get the next sip of water. I, I even wonder how they are living, how are they surviving? You know, they're completely relying on well-wishers who are passing by the road to fetch water for them. And I try to conceptualize that kind of suffering. I try to put myself in their shoes and to understand how resilient do you have to be to survive such an environment. And you know, you're not just thirsty, you're also hungry. The sun is hot, like, man, it was layers and layers of challenges all coming together. Um, so one unique thing I noted, um, so when you would give them maybe an orange, cause you know, sometimes you've carried food and water you know, they will take that orange. You'd expect that Mtuata in their manyata, that are the orange and need to be a family. No, these people will like go and share with everyone. Me, I'm like, what? <laughs> like they just get a bite. And I realized, I, me, I don't even have that level of thinking about other people, even now, you know but probably that's because of living in the city. When it comes to water, if you give them a small bottle, they're not going to keep it for themselves. They will share it with the rest of the community. And I was like, wow, if this isn't the basic principle of Ubuntu, you know, like I, in its most primitive nature, this is Ubuntu, right? And then there was also the other side of now seeing how Ubuntu is lacking when, you know, you have questions for the leadership and wondering with all the resources allocated, which, you know, maybe it's, it's a conversation that we won't get much into now. Why is the community suffering as is, you know? 
And for me, that demonstrates a proper lack of application of Ubuntu. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think it's very interesting. You think if you have much, then you have more to share. But usually it's, it's interesting to see that the people with little, they, because they know what it means to lack. So yeah. if I have little, I want to share with other people or with my neighbor. And like you said, that's the clearly, clearest or the most authentic form of Ubuntu. And we, we appreciate you for sharing that. And do you have any last words, at least for our audience? Do you have anything to tell them? Um, I think I just wanted to add, adding on to that experience. Mm. You see, what you do with the little will always be reflected in everything. I think that's that's something, I, it's a conversation I had in Lapid. They said, there's nothing that you do exclusively to one area of your life. So for instance, if you, let's say procrastinate, it doesn't just affect one area of your life. You've probably just not noticed it affects every other area of your life. If you believe in excellence, it doesn't just affect one area of your life, it cuts across. And so when I, when I was there, one thing I noticed was um, the people that the community had gathered to educate and you'd find maybe in some villages, it was just like two or one person. They, actually gave up their lives for the community. To say the least, they gave up their lives for the community in terms of their focus was how do I develop my people? Like, and you know, I'm not even talking about education like to university or what, it's to secondary school. And this is someone who is thinking so beyond themselves. And I think this is the challenge I'd want to pose to people to just say in your space where you are, you can make a difference. But first, do you even believe that? You know, I think Westernization has taught us a lot of this self-made theory. And when you really think about it, no one is self-made because everyone you encounter in your life teaches you, even if they don't invest financially in you, they teach you a lesson, you know. Can we do the same for other people? Um, when you're going through a challenge, besides thinking of how to get only you out of that challenge, is it possible for you to look for other people who are going through the same challenge and try to see collaborative ways to get out of that challenge? And lastly, I think the last question I'd pose, um, it's in relation to social media. And right now we have the whole world in the palm of our hands, you know. You can access pretty much anything and everything. Um, how are we using it? You know, how are we using it? I see a lot of people wanting to shy away from showing themselves on social media and mm. hating on people who show up on social media. Mm. But that showing up is exactly what we need. That's exactly what we need. We need to see each and every person. It helps, trust me, it helps in some weird way. It helps, mm. even if it's just making someone laugh. Mm. Even if it's just making someone ask a question. Mm. You don't know, you could be the reason why someone lives an abusive situation. Mm. You could be the reason why someone thinks of a career change. Mm. You, you really can know, but let's be bold, believe in ourselves and believe that we have value that we can give to the community. Mm. Yes. Oh, and sorry, just one yeah. last point. It's on dignity. Mm. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. this whole conversation, like I said, Ubuntu for me is a dialogue on dignity. Mm. And dignity sees the other person as an equal. Mm. One question I like asking people is, do you think that when you when you were coming into this world, anyone was requested to make space for you? No. Mm -hmm. You're here by every right, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you have to know just the same way you're here by every right is the same way another person exists here by mm -hmm. every right. Mm -hmm. And so even if we disagree with them, is it possible for us to uphold dignity? Mm -hmm. And I think if we reflect this in the small ways, mm -hmm. even when it comes to leadership and bigger conversations, 
this is the same conversation that we will see. Mm. Yeah. Those are my thoughts for now. Wow. Um, Thank you so, so, so much, Yvonne. I think, first I have to admit you're such a deep thinker. I think both Leslie and I, even all our viewers can agree with that for sure. And I love something that you have said that Ubuntu is a conversation about Honestly, because I feel I agree with you 100%, that that is where it boils down to. It's about honoring other people, it's about respecting other people and respecting ourselves in the, in the process of that. And I love the challenge that you have posed also to our viewers, because what can you do on a daily basis that shows you're practicing Ubuntu? Because once again, I love something that our guest Yvonne has said. That Ubuntu is not some philosophy or some woke thing. So that when you say, oh, me, I'm a, I am an Ubuntu person, then that is where the conversation has to go. It is a way of life, to quote you, Yvonne, directly. That Ubuntu yeah. is a way of life. It's about looking, for example. Right now, there are so many challenges happening in our country. There is, for example, the community that Yvonne has shared about. These are people who do not have enough food, they do not have enough water. But yet we are very quick sometimes to say, eh, not my monkey, not my problem. <laughs> to quote uh, Mr. Moniki, she likes to say that. But oftentimes when you see a problem is not directly affecting us, you just say, hey, not my problem. If it's not affecting me personally, then I am good. But you see, the whole point of Ubuntu as Yvonne said, actually you quoted you quoted Archbishop Desmond Tutu. I was I was reading some of his work and he was just saying that the only way we as human beings are able to enjoy a collective and full and beautiful and dignifying actually human experience is when we take care of each other. So you cannot see your brother, your fellow countrymen in problems and say, not my problem, therefore I am not going to do about it. I think this show is a challenge to each and every one of us. For currently, for the challenges that are facing our country in the present, what can you do? Can you perhaps contribute some money? Look for people that are offering aid or organizations that are working to collect contributions that can go and help some of those people, you know? Because much as we are going to see that, oh, me, I am an Ubuntu person, and I'm going to make my neighbor happy. It's important. Make let's make let's practice fast Ubuntu at home. You know, charity begins at home. Let it, let us start where we are in our kindness that we show to the people that we live with on a daily basis. But also collectively, we are a country that is going through problems, and it would be very helpful if we could hear that out of hearing this conversation about Ubuntu on this show that now you have felt led and you have actively gone ahead and contributed and done something that is to consciously help other people. I think I'm just going to, we're going to conclude here for our conversation uh, today. Uh, yeah. I have, a question. I have a question from the viewers which we really appreciate. Uh, yes. Sharon, shout out to you. She mm -hmm. asked how, this is to Yvonne, she asked mm -hmm. how do you how are you able to keep emotions in check? Even, let me just see if I can get it. Apology. Let me just get the question for you. Uh, how are you able to keep your emotions in check when you see people experience these types of, these kinds of challenges? This is to Yvonne. Okay. There's so many ways I can answer that. You know me, I, I think Chris and Leslie kind of know me. I'm big on emotions. Um, well, I think for me, I've dealt, I've worked in a lot of hardship areas. So I'm kind of hardened towards that. But then again, <laughs> the way I approach this conversation of emotions, one, there's one element. Um, it's about dignity, number one. So, you know, there are different emotions that will come up. You'll find these people practicing things that you're like, Hata we we. Mm. what are you thinking? You know, mm. but to be able to withhold that judgment, to let go, mm. like to not think like that. 
So that's mm -hmm. number one. When you have these negative weird emotions, being able to say you're not in that person's shoes. You don't know what has led them to that point. You found mm -hmm. them living the way that they are living. Mm -hmm. um, you need a blank slate. Mm -hmm. um, then it comes to the harder emotions like sadness. It's okay. It's pretty okay to be sad. I mean, what's the whole point of empathy? I mean, Ubuntu and empathy have to be intertwined. If you're not... Then what are you doing, you know? And even not feeling emotions itself is an emotional reaction. So you might as well just feel the emotions. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I hope I've answered. Mm. Okay. I think uh, the way dear viewers, Leslie, uh, you have to know how passionate we are about this conversation that she's literally doing that from her office. Leslie, do we have any other questions for us? No, I don't think we have any other question, mm -hmm. but I'd like to appreciate everybody that joined in mm -hmm. and to remind you guys that this is just the first episode. We have a series of 10 episodes, which you are very excited about. Mm -hmm. So join us next Monday, same place, same time. Thank you, guys. Thank you so very much. Yvonne, do you have any last words for our guests, you know, commissioners? <laughs> I think community is important. We learn much about independence, but mm -hmm. we should never forget about interdependence, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we need each other. Mm -hmm. And we can always find ways, even when you think you don't need another person, that's, then it's your prerogative to find a way where you need other people or other people need you. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, that's that's what I'd say. All right, thank you so much. From her mouth, Yvonne's mouth, to your ears, dear viewer, that you have been commissioned by Yvonne to go ye <laughs> and live as an Ubuntu conscious person. See you on <laughs> Monday. See you next Monday, as Leslie has said. It has been such a joy for all of us here at Lapid Leaders Africa to host you and we look forward to having even much, much more insightful and challenging conversations. In case you have any feedback or questions that you have that you would like us to tackle as we handle this Ubuntu conversation, feel free to email us or just actually just text us on the Lapid LinkedIn page. Any message, whether it's a message or you ask on uh, or any post that we do on Ubuntu, we are going to be answering that. And we look forward to interacting with you. And hopefully that by the end of this short series, we are going to have a community of people that are loving one another. And we can see that indeed in Kenya, in Africa, in our own home places, we are people that are embodying Ubuntu. We thank you and we honor you as our guest. We look forward to having you in the next show. Frank Komu, our technical guy, over to you to end the show for us. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>